Hey everybody, Happy New Year. We're going to do a little water change here on Butterbean's tank for New Year's. That's going to be his little present. I think maybe on the other end of this video we might give him a big old fat snail for dinner or something like that. But basically we're going to do a before and after video and that's going to be about the extent of it for this one. My main goals tonight, in addition to simply changing out some water, is to get in there and really get this glass cleaned up. I just set this tank up fairly recently, and whenever you've got a new tank, it's very common to get this diatom algae, this brown algae that develops on everything. It's really easy to deal with. It just wipes right off the glass, so that's not going to be an issue for me. I'm going to get in there and just wipe all that down. Uh, I've got a little growing on the end glass down there and I'm going to try to also get the snails out of the bottom. The way I do that is I use a siphon hose that is an open-ended hose. It's just a vinyl tubing rather than a standard gravel vac that's got the sort of larger diameter that narrows down into a hose. This is going to be a small hose right to the end and it's a big enough diameter that I can suck those snail shells right up. Now I do have to be careful if I get it too close to the bottom it'll also suck the gravel right up and as my bumblebee gobies that I used to have found out the hard way on more than one occasion it will also suck up small fish so I gotta be careful when I do that uh, but tonight we're gonna get in there and get those snail shells out of there and do a little bit of water change we're gonna get the glass wiped down and then after that we're gonna give Butterbean a nice big fat snail for dinner so we'll get a little bit of feeding video on the other end of this so there you go there's your before All right, and there's your after. So I need both hands to get the lid open on this one. The hinges broke, so I need to open it very carefully. And then I got a couple of big fat ram's horn snails we're going to drop right down in the middle. Uh, we're going to let Butterbean find them, and then hopefully I'll be able to pick up the camera without too much effort, and we'll get some good close-ups of him feeding. So bear with me for a moment. So they're now in there, and we're going to give him a moment to find it, and while he's looking, I'm going to go ahead and pause you right here. Alright, it took him a little while to figure out what was going on there. But he figured it out. I actually had to wind up putting a third snail in there because he just wasn't getting it. So it's been five minutes or so since the last little segment there. I was rushing around trying to get the camera because I thought he was going to go right down and start tearing them up. But he didn't. But he's figured they're out, figured out they're in there now. If you ever wonder why he's so fat, wonder no more. He eats well. His staple food is freeze-dried krill or river shrimp. I usually give him two or three of those every day depending on their size. And then, I don't know, once or twice a week I'll throw some snails in there. But as I said earlier, tonight's New Year's Eve. So we're celebrating a little bit. He's getting a big old feast. If you ever are fortunate enough to own a puffer, you will definitely fall in love with puffers and you will always want a puffer from then on. I don't think I've ever met anybody that had a puffer that said, meh, they're alright. 
you either have a puffer and you love them or you've never had a puffer they are just really really cool fish See, that's a good look there. You can see how the meat is sort of pulled inside the shell. He's going to crunch away at that shell until he eventually gets to where that meat is. And that's part of the reason I give him the snail shells. Puffers have uh, teeth that grow continually and they do need to be worn down uh, similar to rodents teeth. Now figure eight puffers do not have really hard teeth so just feeding them a regular diet of freeze-dried krill is enough to keep their teeth in check if all I gave them was like cut up pieces of um, you know shrimp or mussel uh, you know stuff like that soft meaty stuff if all I fed him was blood worms then there would be issues but since his staple food is already a shelled animal you know it's the crustacean the krill that keeps his teeth in check. His teeth are not so hard that that softer shell of the krill is, you know, is too soft. So adding the bonus, you know, ram's head snail or even the little pond snails that I throw in there from time to time just really ensures that his teeth don't get out of control. Now my pea puffers that I have upstairs, I have a couple of little dwarf Malabar pea puffers in a tank upstairs, they have really soft teeth so I don't worry too much about them I feed them the um, frozen blood worms the majority of the time but I always make sure at least once or twice a week I throw a small handful of little pond snails in there uh, not necessarily for them to feed on directly at the moment but just to have them in the tank it gives them something to do it gives them forage it gives them something to look for and it keeps them occupied fish like puffers are pretty intelligent as far as fish go and if they're just kept in an empty tank with not much to do not much to look at or explore um, for lack of a better word I'll say they get bored very easily and they can get kind of dejected and it's not very good for their health so it's always good if you're gonna keep puffers you gotta keep them in a tank that's got plenty of stuff to do uh, plenty of stuff to interact with forage places to look for food and they basically have to provide them with the ability to carry out their natural behavior if you don't uh, it's just not good for their health and they won't survive very long so he is just going to do this probably until all of those snails are gone he's just going to move from one to the other like we've been watching him do here So no doubt he is going to have a happy New Year, at least a happy New Year's Eve. I don't know how his New Year's going to turn out, uh, but his New Year's Eve is certainly going to be a good one. He's spoiled for choice. He's looking back and forth. He doesn't know which one of these snails to go after first. So there you go, everybody. Look, look, he's coming over to say goodbye. He must have seen me zooming out on the camera. I'm going to say thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget this one is my brackish tank. You don't want to miss any of the videos I got coming up or anything else that I got going on down here. Thanks again for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy New Year's once again. See you real soon.